All right, this video or this tutorial is covering percent yield. Uh, so a little bit on the background, and then we'll try an example problem following the background. So the, here's the background. This this is uh, this is how you do it. There's a formula, and you take the actual yield from an experiment. So this is this is from actually carrying out an experiment, and then you divide it by the theoretical yield. So you want to see you want to see how much you got from a reaction, how much product was recovered. So actual yield, this is this would be how much product recovered in an experiment. And then you compare it to the theoretical yield. So what what the uh what the, this is actually from the stoichiometry. So from doing like a mole to mole problem. Okay, and many times you'll have to do, you know, you'll this is kind of like paper and pencil. You're just doing it on paper and pencil. In theory, this is how much the reaction is supposed to yield. Okay, and that's what's called the theoretical yield. So you're comparing the two, and then you get a percentage. So you, so this should wind up being a, a fraction. Actually, sometimes you could get more, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you some reasons why you could actually get more than a hundred percent. Um, so and then times 100 to get a, a fraction. Um, the lab that we'll be doing is we have a beaker and there's going to be dissolved uh, dissolved copper ions in here which makes a blue color. So the copper water, hydrated copper ion and water complex, it, it makes a blue color. Um, and then we add we add little iron flakes to this and they're a black color so this gets added to some warm copper sulfate and the sulfate you might maybe you're wondering what the sulfate the sulfate just is like a charge holder it doesn't really do anything so uh it's the copper and iron that are interacting and they undergo a, a, a redox what's called a redox reaction reduction and oxidation uh this this iron will become oxidized meaning it loses electrons and uh, this copper will get reduced, meaning it gains electrons. It's <laughs> it. This is one of those weird times in science where um, reduction it means gain, so it's like opposite what you think. That happens all the time in math too. So the reaction is this, and this is the one we'll be doing in class. So we react solid iron and uh, copper ions. Uh, the iron is more reactive than copper meaning this guy likes electrons I'm sorry <laughs> it likes to lose electrons and the copper too likes to gain electrons and you know we have a whole unit on this uh, redox reactions in electrochemistry anyway this supplies electrons to the copper and what you'll actually see is a uh, solid copper forming. So this is before the reaction, and then this is after. Somehow the beaker got skinnier. This is after. Um, and uh, it'll be more or less clear. Um, it depends on which reactant runs out. But you're going to see a... Um, you're going to see like a brownish type color forming in here and the the brown color you see is a uh, solid copper forming so that's what these are solid copper and meanwhile the iron loses electrons so it carries then carries a 2 plus charge and notice how this went from a 2 plus to a zero charge um so anyway we we take this amount back to relate it to percent yield we take this amount uh, and then we're going to extract it from the water. So you pour off the water, um, and then you take a, uh, you take like a spatula. It has a weird name. It's called a, a rubber policeman. A spatula, and you scoop all this out, and then you put it on filter paper. So this brown copper will wind up on filter paper. Now it's still wet here, so this goes into the oven. And you dry it down. 
uh, we'll have we will have weighed the blank filter paper, and then when we weigh it with the dry copper on there, you subtract the filter paper, and then you should just have the weight of the copper. And then uh, that's that's actually our actual yield. This right here. So our dry copper. So dry this down in an oven. And then this uh, copper here, when it's all dried down, this is our actual yield. So what we actually got in the experiment. And we're going to compare this number to what we get by doing like paper and pencil, by doing like a mole to mole problem, okay, and a limiting reactant problem. So we'll, uh, I, th I believe in the lab, we'll be starting with like 1.100 grams of this. And then we start with like, I have to look at the numbers. It's like 1.60 grams of the copper. So since you're given starting amounts of both, then you uh, find the limiting reactant, and then uh, you find out which, so, so that you could determine the amount of copper produced. So you want to find out how many grams of copper produced. And when we solve this question, that will be our theoretical yield when we solve that mole problem in class. And we do that right before we start the lab. And our, and our final answer to the lab will be this number. And when you divide the two, you could get this. So a reason, a reason you can get more than 100. Um, so actually, I would like you guys to list that. So I'll make a box here and list uh, two reasons you may get more than 100%. So why would the actual yield, what, what's some reason why it might be more than the theoretical yield? So Try to go over this lab setup. You may have to rewind and then and then listen to how this lab setup works. So, so it's it's there's a reaction. You extract it somehow, or you extract it by getting rid of the water, and then you dry it down in the oven. Okay, so list two reasons why you can get more, possibly more than a hundred percent. Okay, so so have that in your notebooks so I can check on the next day. All right, so let's try a quick problem. So this is actually number 83 in your textbook. Um, so benzene reacts, C6H6 reacts with bromine. And you get the following. You get something called, this is called bromobenzene. OK. So you have 30 grams of benzene, and it reacts with 65 grams of bromine. What's the theoretical yield of bro bromobenzene? Okay, so um, so we're given we're given uh, starting amounts of both. Okay, so we have thirty grams of benzene, and we have sixty-five grams of bromine. This one. Okay, so you're given starting amounts of both. That's a dead giveaway that this problem is a limiting reactant problem. So I always use method two from our limiting reactant tutorial is I convert both to moles and then I compare it to the moles in the balanced reaction. And if you noticed, everything here is one to one. It's already balanced. There's one of these, okay, one of these, and one of these. So everything here is one to one. So we're just gonna change both of these to moles. Thirty grams of C6H6. Uh, I have the molar mass as seventy-eight point one one. Okay, and I get uh, let's see, thirty divided by seventy-eight. Uh, 0 0.384, three sig figs, 0 0.384 moles, and for uh, bromine, uh, 
I get it's I get one hundred and fifty nine point eight one. Um, in general, I I always like to uh, keep two decimal places when I calculate molar masses. Um, it's just to ensure that this number limits our sig figs and not the molar mass. The so molar mass should never limit your sig figs. So go to how many ever more, you know, like one place more than whatever measurement went into it. Okay, and then for this. I get uh, 65 divided by 159.81. Um, I get 0 0.407. 407 moles. Okay, and it looks like uh, it's one to one here. So in method two, we take our um, we take our uh, the required amount. So required meaning these amounts, the mole amounts shown. So we require one mole of C6H6 for every one mole of Br2. And we compare this to what we actually have. Okay, And make sure you put them, it doesn't matter if you put this one on the numerator, this one, or this one. Just as long as you keep it the same when you compare. So the actual, what we actually have is 0.384 moles compared to 0 0.407 moles. Okay, and as you can see, it's not one to one here. Um, you're going to run, you have too much of the of the denominator and we put BR2 here. So this one's gonna be in excess and the C6H6 will be, um, will be the limiting reactant. So we, we can make the, the denominator one, just go 0 0.384, oops. divided by, so if we divide here, um, all I'm doing right now is I'm making the numerator 1, so 0 0.943, 0 0.943 to 1, that's all I wanted to do was make the denominator 1 so that you could see it's it's a lot easier to compare now. I mean, it was easy to begin with because it's one to one, but this we don't have enough. We need require one, but we'd have but we have 0.943 to one. We don't have one to one. So the one on the numerator is our limiting reactant. Okay. So when we calculate the theoretical yield of bromobenzene, we should be using this mole amount and convert that to uh, bromobenzene. So we'll take 0.384. I have some space up here of uh, C6H6 times, and they're reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio of C6H6Br to one mole of C6H6. Okay, and we want grams here. So we're going to need the molar mass of C6H5Br. Okay, I don't have that exactly yet, so let me plug this into my app here. H5Br. Okay, I get 157.01. Okay, 157.01 grams in one mole. Okay, so we have 0.384 times 157.01. And I get 60. Point Three. It should be three sig figs. Sixty point three grams. And boxer answers always boxer answers. Um, if the actual yield is forty two point three, what's the percentage yield? So the formula is actual from the experiment divided by the theoretical amount times a hundred. So this would be. 
42.3 divided by 60.3 times 100. Okay, and we get uh, 42.3 divided by 60.3. And so we get 70.1%. So, and that's our percent yield. Okay, so um, make sure you guys have the answer to this. So list two reasons. List two reasons why it's possible. It, it might be possible in the lab that we do on on uh, this week. Uh, why it might be why you may get more than 100%. Okay, see you guys.